Sliding left. On the go. Throws. End zone. Touchdown! The Bills score from 13 yards out. Shakir hauls it in. I worked even harder this offseason. That's for me, that's where it starts. Um, obviously take a little break, but I know the work that was that I put in last offseason and, and what got me to this point. And, I, and you know, after doing some self-evaluation over the next couple of days, I'll figure out and I'll, I'll know what it's going to take to to take that next step. Welcome on into Jay Sports Bar. It is Super Bowl week, so we got a special lineup for you. Okay, Cala Canijo going to join me in studio as we catch up with some of the Legends from the blue now off in the NFL, but first things first, how you doing, brother? Doing great. Yeah. Awesome we, to be here. Real quick, who you got in the game? Okay, I'm going to go Chiefs. Yeah, I'm, I'm not yep. going to pick against Patrick Mahomes. We can get into that later, though, but first things first, we got to get out to the East Coast right now because uh, Khalil Shakir, Buffalo Bills wide receiver, is going to join us. The Shack Attack is back in Boise, at least for the next half hour or so. How are we doing, buddy? Good. Appreciate y'all for having me. Looking at, uh, at the way that you finished, what did you think of how you did in the playoffs on the biggest stage? I mean, we all saw the touchdown against the Steelers. Shakir knocked down inside the 10. Oh, what an effort! The play of the night! You come back, you score another incredible grab against the Chiefs. What was it like to, for you to kind of live out those moments? I mean, it's it's fun. It's, it's definitely, you know, you're in the moment, um, just hoping to make a play and, um, you know, make sure that you're in the right spot at the right time and ball get in my hands and have the opportunity to make the play. And I mean, it just, it just shows, you know, just, just keep your head down, work hard and, and things will pay off. You know, still got a lot of work to do though. Some things never changed, huh, Shaq? I remember seeing you do that every single day in practice. <laughs> like, yo, how do we stop this guy? Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's funny. Um, the uh, after that Steelers play, Josh had came up to me the next day, and he had pulled up the um, uh, UCF clip from my last year. I think it was the first game of the season, heading for my senior year, and kind of had the, the same exact play, just went left instead of right. So it was cool. Yeah, I, I think the one at UCF was two yards further or something like that. But they did look nearly identical. For you, like, uh, how much confidence did you get over these final few weeks of of not just the the postseason but the regular season? I mean. Your, your production was up there with Stephon Diggs, who's like as good as it gets in the NFL. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it's it's definitely the the more reps you get and just the, the repetition of, of being in the game, getting more of a feel for the game. And, um, you know, I've said this a thousand times to a, a lot of the, the media down in Buffalo, up in Buffalo, but, you know, I, I'm not a fan of the word uh, of comfortable. You know, I've, I've been trying to get rid of that word just because it doesn't sit with me the right way. But. I guess you just get, like I said, more of a feel for the game and uh, you feel a little more relaxed to um, just just do what you do. You know, we talk about a lot in that building, just playing free um, when you're out there, you know, just just playing free. You're, you're at peace when you're out there. No, this is what we do. This is what we've been wanting to do, you know, since we were young and started playing football is just playing the NFL. So, you know, if I can step onto that field and I know my mind's at peace and I'm, I'm, I'm right where I'm supposed to be, um, just be where my feet are at and, and make plays. That's awesome, Shaq. You know, back when we were finishing up, we'd always say no fear, no hesitation before we went out mm -hmm. there. And, like, I think that's a testament to you and your preparation and the stuff that never changed. You did it from day one at Boise, and I knew when you were in the NFL, you'd do the exact same thing. Um, speaking of preparation, though, how do you get prepared for all that snow in Buffalo, bro? <laughs> like, all we see on social media is everything snowed in there. Like, you got used to that yet? Yeah, I mean, first things first, appreciate you, brother. That uh, you, you taught me a lot along the way, bro, really. Um, you know, just from watching you work and, and your work habits and the way you studied and prepared for the game, I learned a lot from you. Um, but, yeah, man, uh, I don't think you can really prepare for um, snow games. I don't think you can prepare to, to try and be ready for that. It's one thing that you you know it's going to be cold. Um, you, know, you know that at the end of the day, no matter what the weather is, we have a game to play, you know? So mm -hmm. you can either sit there and, and, and complain about it or, um, you know, make the best of it. You know, the way I thought about thought about it going into that week and we knew the weather was going to be what it was, was it's just, man, how many how many people get the opportunity to do this, you know? On, on this stage, um, anybody would do anything to be in the position that we were in, so make the most of every opportunity. What is it like, though, Shaq, to get back, like, from a road game? And we've, we've kind of seen, like, the videos that come up on social media and your car is just absolutely buried in the snow. You got to get out the shovel. Like, has, has that happened to you in Buffalo yet? Yeah, I think the, the clip they keep showing that's around social media, that was from last year. Mm -hmm. And that was um, from my rookie season was 
um, we had got like seven feet of snow or something like that. It was a, a, an absurd amount of snow. And um, we had got back and everybody's car was literally covered. I I had left mine. I left mine there and rode back with a teammate and was like, I'll worry about this another day. But yeah, it, that was from last year. We had gotten back from Chicago, I believe. We got stuck in Chicago. Then we had to come back the next day and flew into a different airport and had to drive, bus down to our actual airport. It was, it was all crazy, but um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a scene like you, you get there and you're just, you get off the plane and you're like, I, this is the last thing I want to deal with right now, but um, got to get home somehow. Right. <laughs> that is, that's the crazy part about it, bro. Like people don't realize that at the end of the day, you're still a person trying to get your car back from wherever you parked <laughs> back to your house. And like, it's the real deal when you get off the plane. That's exactly what you get back to. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the fans there, the, the fans and the yeah. people in that community are amazing. Like, they will sit there and I don't know. They There were people there when we got there and, you know, hats off to them. They helped get a whole bunch of cars out, if not everybody's car out. I, like I said, I came back the next day and there were still people out there. Um, I believe some high school kids that I came and, um, you know, they helped me get my car out, you know, so the, the people there are amazing. Shaq, what's the transition been like for you to go from, you know, Boise, uh, a community like Boise to playing in one in Buffalo? I, I feel like there are some similarities there, but mm -hmm. Buffalo is known for having this super endearing fan base. If something goes wrong on a football field, they're like the first fan base to start kicking in for GoFundMes to support some cause. Uh, we see them out there shoveling your guys' stadium. Um, what, what is it like to play for, for that Buffalo fan base? And have you broken a table yet at all? No, I have not broken a table. My, my wife would not let me jump through a table. Um, but, yeah, the uh, communities and people are, are very, very similar. Like you said, first to, to jump on and to, to make sure that the players are all good and help them in, in any way possible. Um, my, my neighbors all shovel out my car, um, in the parking lot every time it snows, like, and I, I would know for sure a hundred percent that if I was back in Boise and something like that would happen, it would be the exact same, you know? So very similar communities. Um, shout out to, to Bill's mafia, man. They're just, I, I can't even put into words how great they are and, and what it means to, to us players to show up every day on game day, knowing that that's the stadium is going to be packed out. They're going to be screaming their tails off. No matter what the weather is, too, that's the craziest part is it can be sunny out, sun's out, shining, um, or it can be, you know, pouring down in, in snow, and that, that stadium's still going to be packed, so hats off to them. That's a great community, bro. So if, wifey, if wifey's not going to let you jump through the table, that means I got to come and do the tailgating <laughs> for you, then I can jump through the table and let you know what it feels like. Uh, yeah, no, nah, for real, you should, bro. I didn't had a couple people come up. Um, a couple of my buddies came up uh, a couple of times, and they, they're always searching for a table to jump through. They're, they haven't been successful yet, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, we got to get that on the books for next season for sure. When I do come, okay. though, where's the best spot to get uh, Buffalo Wings? Uh, barbell, for sure. Um, we get that every time people come into town. We go uh, pick it up, or sometimes my wife will go and, and take them there when they sit there. But Barbell, for sure. Um, really, really good wings. I honestly haven't even... I've had a couple other places, um, but I would definitely say that that, that place right there um, stands out. And when you come up, you have to get rid of the ranch and get 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 the get the blue cheese. All right. um, it, it might be weird, but I, <laughs> when I first came up here, that's what I was told, and it's actually pretty good. So the wings with blue cheese, that's the way to go. I want to do it like the locals, bro. You got to just get me right in with the people up there. That's the only way to do it. Yeah, no, nah, it, it, it's, it'll surprise you. It's, it's, a nice little, it's a nice little combination, actually. Shaq, can we confirm that you're gonna you're gonna rock the number ten for a while? Obviously, you wore two here, but I mean, I, I know that there have been people on the fence. We need to commit to Shaq jerseys. Uh, Buffalo's they got a good jersey. I like it. It's a clean look. But are, are you gonna commit to wearing ten here for a while so we know it's okay to buy that thing? I, I love ten. I don't okay. I don't see myself uh, changing to a different number, but I, I love it. Okay, um, what's it like playing with Josh Allen? I mean. That's a name that obviously people in Boise are very familiar with. He played on the blue, not only uh, against Boise State, but in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. But what's it like playing with Josh Allen? He's a freak. He's a freak of nature. I, I, it's crazy. Like people are like, how it's like playing with him. Describe how he is. I mean, he's a, he's a dog, an, an animal, a, a leader, um, a whole bunch of things put into one guy. Just a, a, a super freak of nature. He can do everything. He can make any throw. Um, but outside of his just physical abilities, um, the man he is, the, the guy he is to us off the field, 
um, the leader that he is, um, making sure he's the one that gets us going. I mean, he's an all-around, just just amazing guy to be around. Do you guys talk about your paths at all? I mean, being both in the Mountain West, both probably, well, definitely overlooked out of high school, but even overlooked a little bit going into the NFL. Like, how much do your paths and pasts help you guys kind of form that bond that you have right now? Yeah, I think it's something that we 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 just know. I don't think we've maybe talked about it once or twice when I first got up uh, got up to Buffalo, but it's just I think that you know that the, for me it's that blue collar mentality, something that I learned at Boise, and I think that's something definitely um, as we as we know Josh has just the way he works, and um, I mean we see it obviously the work that he puts in pays off on on any game day, whether it's Sunday, Mondays or. or Thursdays, whatever game day it is, he's just a guy that that works his tail off to make sure that he puts himself in the best position to, you know, play ball when it comes down to game day. Yeah, that's cool. That moment uh, after you scored that touchdown right there in the corner, he was the first one there looking right over you, bro, turning you up. So that's it's awesome to see your guys' trust and your bond and him putting the ball there for you to make the play that Shaq has always gone and made, you know, doing it in practice, doing it in the game. Like, no surprise at all that you were able to do that. Yeah, Shaq, real quick, by the way, kind of building off that, Man, I, you've had a lot of guys score touchdowns for the Bills, you know, throughout this throughout the year, but uh, it, it seemed like it was something special there when you found the end zone, man. Like your whole offensive line got over there, and they put you up on on your shoulders. Like, what what does that mean to you? Because I mean, clearly there's there's something going on in that locker room where you're a special piece of of what is going on in Buffalo right now. I just I just thought that was a cool, genuine reaction from your teammates immediately after you scored what was probably the biggest touchdown of your life. I can definitely say that I'm I'm the type of guy in the locker room. I don't really I don't really talk much. Um, I don't um, I kind of just handle my business, um, do what needs to be done in the locker room. I'm in my playbook, um, treatment, getting everything done. Then once that's on once that's all done, I go home. I'm not a guy that's really, you know, th that speaks too much in in the locker room, but I think that um, I would hope that the guys know that I'm a guy that um, as they see, just keeps his head down and just works and, and waits for his opportunity. And I think in those moments where, you know, you've seen this after the Steelers touchdown and the O line coming over and guys picking me up, um, I definitely think that the 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 intensity of the game, you know, it being a playoff game, that one in the KC one, um, definitely adds to the excitement. You know, um, especially in like KC games going back and forth, um, the Steelers game kind of just put them away, right? Like the intensity and in the moments in which I had these touchdowns, um, I think was something that just kind of got everybody going. So where did you get that approach, Shaq? Like, how have you figured out, like, this is the type of teammate and character that you kind of want to display in the locker room as a professional football player? Like, where, where did that come from? Like, the I don't want to talk too much. And maybe that means when you do talk, you your, your words are heard. Yeah, I mean, I think Carla can can back me up on this at, at Boise. I just. I, I definitely wasn't quiet at Boise. I think that that's mm -hmm. uh, something that changed from Boise to the NFL. But um, it was, you know, we loved we loved to play around in that Boise locker room. Loved to play. We we loved playing around. But I think that when it was time to go, that you know uh, something had to be said to get going, right? And I think that that was kind of me at Boise. My approach at, at Boise was. You know, I'm all for, you know, the, the games and, and playing around and stuff. But at the end of the day, we have a goal. We have to prepare and make sure that we get things done so we play our best come on game day. And, um, you know, like I said, that's something I learned from college. You know, when, you, when you're when you sitting there and you have a group of college guys, right, and, we, you know, you have so much going on on a college campus and guys looking forward to weekends and after the game, and you can kind of get lost in that and, and forget that we're there to play college football. We have a game to play. We, we're there to, to get something done. And Carla wasn't scared to, to talk to guys and tell them, hey, you know, tighten up. And, you know, we got to do this. We have to get this done. And, um, you know, just from my freshman year on, watching guys who were older than me and their approach to, um, you know, hey, we can have fun, but let's make sure that we, we get done what we have to get done. That was kind of my approach at Boise was, you know, let the guys have fun. Let's all have fun because I think the moment that you get a little too serious and start to think of it more of like a, like a job, um, I think it's kind of a downward spiral from there. Um, but, you know, my transition from Boise to Buffalo was, um, you know, being a captain at Boise and then getting into the league was, you know, kind of went back to my freshman year was, hey, watch the guys ahead of you, you know, um, you know, where at, when I was a freshman, it was looking up to college. And, you know, now my early years now is, 
you know, looking up, looking up to Josh Allen, looking up to Stephon Dix and watching how they work, watching how they lead and kind of just taking a, a bit of their game and inputting in my game or my lifestyle, you know, every single day. And I'm still in that process of making sure that I, you know, I'm quiet and I'm, but I'm, I'm observing everything. I think it's more just observe and take everything in, takes, take something from somebody's a veteran's work habit every single day or their, their leadership habits every single day, and, you know, kind of tuck it in the back pocket. And, um, you know, right now, like I said, I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm taking notes from everybody, but the, the day that I have to step out and be a leader, um, I'll be ready to go. Not sure when that day is, but, um, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll be ready to go. Yeah, man, your your actions always spoke louder than your words. You know, even when you were the captain, you and I, but when it was time to go, like, you didn't have to worry about Shaq showing up and being the one on the front lines, making it happen. And, you know, I'm I'm super proud of you, and I think it's safe to say we're all proud of you back here in Boise and knowing that this is where you came from to, to get to where you're at now and still continuing to do those same things. And I think to that point, as you know and understand, there's – guys in that locker room that you know you're having a positive impact on and influence on just by operating that way day in and day out so I'm super appreciative for you bro and in our relationship and just being able to watch you and support you from the sidelines man it's awesome appreciate that brother Kick, uh, you know you brought up a little bit earlier the word comfort right uh, Shaq and like from like a sports psychology standpoint here like you've accomplished so much at some point you have to feel fulfillment right but you say you don't want to be comfortable so how how, mm -hmm. how do you walk that that fine line there Khalil um I, I would it, it's it's hard I'm not going to say and say it's, it's something that you know I can just flip a switch and it's it's a done deal right but it's still a working process I think for me it's more of like you know, I, I've always the, the term, you know, don't get comfortable mm -hmm. like that. That's always just stuck with me. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. So even when I'm speaking and I'm, I'm feel myself about to say that word, it, it just doesn't feel right. You know, it's there's always something that I'm that I'm chasing after, you know, and, um, you know, I, I made it to the league and I've had a, a couple, you know, some successful plays and done well so far. But there's there's still something missing. I'm still chasing something, you know, so it's that. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happy with what I've been doing, but I'm also never satisfied. You mm -hmm. know, I'm also never there's still that that bit. And I, I say I can't even really define what it is like. It's just I know I have a lot more to do. I, of course, I have my personal goals of, of what I want to be someday within this league. Um, but at the same time, it's I kind of just, you know, sit there every day. And I, I started, you know, journaling um, this past season and just writing down thoughts and and what I what to me, like what I liked about my day, what I need to change. And it was just more of just taking things day by day. And those, you know, you keep putting in those daily deposits, you know, it says, uh, you know, brick by brick, just keep stacking, right. Keep stacking days. And if you keep stacking days, eventually all those days add up and now you're where you want to be, you know? So, um, I've kind of just been more of just, you know, like I said before, just, just keep my head down, stack the days and, and I'll be where I want to be at eventually. I, it, it's funny. I, I'm not one to, um, you know, just kind of pat myself on the back with, with what has been done. It's more, you know, what has to get done, you know, so. That's awesome, bro. Keep stacking days, like to your point, and off-season time right now, so obviously lots of time to stack those days, but also time to just step away from the game and, you know, get your sort of mental clarity back right after the long, long season. You got some fun stuff that you could share that you're going to be doing this off-season? Yeah, man. Right. Like I, said, I was talking before, uh, I've just been golfing a lot. I'm, I'm a, I could, I, I would definitely say I'm addicted. Um, so we're working on that cause it's awful right now. And then, um, you know, in a couple of weeks, uh, me and the wifey and her family will be heading to Hawaii for a week. Um, and then we'll be there for a week, just a little family vacation. And then, uh, I think we're going to Disney world after that, um, for me and the wifey, our anniversary. And then, um, Oh, and then I'll be up in uh, I'll be up in Boise for for pro day. I'm, I'm gonna come back and um, support some of the guys there, and uh, you know that'll that'll be fun. That'll be my first time being back in a while, so that'll be fun, bro. Well, when you get here, if the weather's good enough, hopefully it is, we'll book a tee time and go play some golf. <laughs> and uh, oh, no doubt. Uh, real no real doubt. quick though, you going what, what island are you going to? 
look, man, I, I don't, the wifey plans everything. Okay. I know where we're going. <laughs> well, I can tell you what If you need doing. any advice, you got, I mean, you got oh. Mr. Hawaii right here. <laughs> yeah. Now. See, we got that deeper connection too, Shaq, that a lot of people don't don't know about with the with the 808. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you'll be right back at home for sure with all the fam there. Be fun. You know, what's funny is last year when I went, we went on our honeymoon after um, we were in Waikiki, and uh, I had like three people that I had never I recognized one, but family members, aunts, cousins. You know, one came. We had just landed at the airport, and she was like, "You're Mona's son, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, like." Yeah. That's my mom. And she was like, oh, like, I'm your aunt. Like, it was so weird. Like, and then that happened like two or three other times at the hotel we were staying at. Um, so it was just, it's funny. I got a lot of family there that I don't even really know. But yeah. um, it, it's, it was definitely, definitely a good time every time I go back there. That's awesome, bro. Yeah, it's always the, hey, mom, dad, do you know who this is? Because they said I'm, they're my auntie, but uh, I need help putting the pieces together. That's the poly Not family 100%. for you. <laughs> right. That's 100%, bro. Hey, Shaq, real quick, we, we see the sun shining behind you. Clearly, I don't, I don't, you're, not, you're probably not in Buffalo. So uh, where, where, where are you these off, uh, you know, the off season? Where, where are you spending your time? Yeah, man, I'm trying to – I see this. It's, it's glaring, and I hate how it looks. So you're can, okay. I'm, you're okay, I'm, man. I'm you're good. over a little bit. Um, <laughs> you're good. Yeah, no, I'm in, I'm in South Carolina. We, uh, my, brother, my brother's been living here. He went to college up here. So um, this is where I trained uh, last off season. So with uh, Eric Moulds, he used to play for the Bills back yeah. in the day. Um, so I'm looking forward to training with him again. And me and the wife, he just got a house out here as well, closed about four days ago. And um, yeah, this is this is where I, I spend most of my off season. I think one of the last times, or probably the last time, I, I spoke to you face to face, Shaq, was pretty much right after pro day, which was a big day for you. But the day prior to that was also a big day for you because I, I think that was the day that you mm -hmm. proposed to your, your wife. What has it been mm -hmm. like for you guys just to kind of set off across the country and figure this thing out by yourselves? With, with your dog, I think, though, too, right? Yeah, my okay. dog literally just, just cracked open the door and ran in here. So she's <laughs> a little, a little going up here. But, yeah, no, it, it's been definitely – it's been an experience for sure, you know. Um, so we met at Boise and, um, you know, went all the way to Buffalo. Uh, and uh, it's been amazing. I mean, she might say otherwise with the weather, but we, we both <laughs> love the community and the people. And like I said, coming up here and, and seeing the sun finally and getting some sunshine, it feels great. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, before we let you go, Khalil, you know, we, we talk about, um, you know, not getting caught up with what you've done and focusing on what you want to do. But there is a stat that I, I got to bring up, man, because you led the NFL – in a stat that probably a lot of receivers would, would love to lead, lead the NFL in, your, your target per, to, to catch percentage was the highest of, of anyone that played in the NFL this year, right? As a wide receiver, if the ball comes your way, you want your quarterback to believe that you're reliable. So I, I guess this tells me one thing. Uh, one thing, it shows me that you're reliable. The other thing, it shows me that Buffalo is putting you into a good spot to catch the football at times. But what does it mean to you? to lead the NFL in a significant stat for a wide receiver. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's great. I mean, it, it shows, you know, the, the work that, that was put in, it, it pays off. And like I said, it was a, wasn't the start that I wanted, but as the season kind of progressed and, and came more and more onto the scene and, and made more and more plays, um, it, it's a good feeling for sure. You know, I'm not, not one to look in the stats, but I, I will say that that's a pretty cool one right there to have. What's more likely to happen in the next year? You consistently break 100 on the golf course or your first 100 catch season? Oh, I, 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 wanna, I don't know. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. It, get, <laughs> this, it depends who's keeping game. score on the golf course. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. I might have to, it's, you know, I, I'm going to have a ball in my back pocket when I run into the woods. And <laughs> I'll, I'll find my ball every time, that's for sure. <laughs> that's great. Khalil, you're the man, dude. We, we appreciate you joining us. I'm glad that we caught you this year because I got a feeling you're going to be very busy this week in the, in the years to come. So um, we appreciate the chance for, to, to catch up with you, check in both on football and in life. And you are doing everybody proud back here, man. I, I tell Kit Kyle this all the time. There, there are certain players that they leave and they go off, and whether it be the NFL, whether it be business, um, and there's players years you know, removed that are still in the program, 
and they're still bringing you up. It's Kay Kala Kaniho, it's Khalil Shakir, it's Avery Williams. Like, I, I hope, like, for me, I think that that's the ultimate compliment is, is guys that you probably barely even know on the football team are still being like, oh, no, this is how Khalil did it, so this is exactly how I'm trying to do it. So I, I hope that gives you some uh, validation that you've, you've been a big, impactful player. And I know a guy like Billy Bowens constantly brought you up this last year as, as he was going through his ordeal and, and trying to make an impact on the team. But I feel like that, that should give you some type of gratification. Hopefully it does, man. Yeah, no doubt. I, I definitely need to get back to Boise more. I miss it. I miss it for sure. You know, it's a, it's a short window to – to get back, but I said we're going to make it happen this off season and, and the off season to come. I mean, love Boise. Yeah, well, Khalil, we'll let you go, bud. We appreciate you joining us this week and uh, enjoy the off season. I hope that golf score, you know, get, <laughs> gets gets lower and lower there. So, uh, drive for sure, putt for dough. Which one? <laughs> putt for dough. Okay. Out of boy. <laughs> okay, I'm drive for show. That's why I'm terrible <laughs> at golf, and we'll get better at it. But thanks again, Khalil. Thanks, Shaq. Yeah, appreciate y'all for having me. Yeah. Khalil Shakir, one of the one of the best to ever do it at, at Boise State, and you see what he's doing in the NFL right now, and it, it is no surprise to me that he is making just these gradual improvements. And like next year, we're going to look up, and he's going to be a guy that's probably going to have 70 catches, going to threaten a thousand yards, yep. um, and I just it's not going to surprise me. He's going to be this guy that everybody's like, where'd he come from? We know. Yeah. We know. Yeah, for sure. The same same thing here. I was going to say, if when that happens, everybody's going to. Everybody who knows Shaq and who he is and, more importantly, the person he is, and you heard the mentality mm -hmm. that he spoke with, that's him day in, day out. He's been that way since he showed up on the scene here at Boise. He's continuing to do that, so it's a no-brainer, and that stuff falls into place, and I think it's him just being ready for when his number's called. You know, he's done that time and time again. Real quick, what is – I mean, I'm going to sort of put you on the spot. I guess we, we, we should have asked Khalil what, what was the most uh, embarrassing thing that, that – you know, maybe a play you made against him in practice, but he, he ever break your ankles or just kind of leave you searching for, you know, your jock strap or whatever? Yeah, I think there there is definitely times where Shaq got the better of me and then I got the better <laughs> of him. It, for me and him, it was always a game of chess, I felt like. Yeah. You know, like I was trying to outthink where he was moving to and he was trying to outthink where I was going to. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was great having that every single day because then you show up and play somebody on the other team and you're like, nobody's as good as the guy that I just went against mm -hmm. four days in a row, you know, and... I'm helping him, and he's helping me figure out sort of the keys that's going to make it go. Is it surreal seeing him on that stage? Like, I, again, we, I just went over this. Like, for us, it's believable. It doesn't mm -hmm. surprise me he's there. Yeah. But there still is a little part of it that is surreal. I mean, making a diving catch going out of bounds mm -hmm. to, give Can uh, to give Buffalo the lead over Kansas City at halftime in, in the NFL playoffs. Yeah. Like, there is a moment, there is a part of this for me that is a little surreal because I remember the guy that just got recruited here out yep. of Murrieta and be like, well, it, He's got yeah. four stars attached to his name. I guess he's pretty good. And then right. he plays as a true freshman. So it's like, wow, he must be legit. And he, and he found out that the reason why, you know, for the four stars, the reason why he played early, uh, immensely talented, sure, physically, but it was everything between the ears that he just always put himself in a great position mm -hmm. to succeed. Yeah, I think he was always mature beyond his grade, right, or, or age for when he came in. And that's why it was so, like, easy for me to – see him putting everything into his craft and being able to contribute right away. And I think seeing those moments on, on Sundays or Mondays whenever they're, they're playing those primetime games, it, I just get excited because I, I know everything that went into that moment mm -hmm. behind the scenes. And for it to come to fruition, it's like this is why he's been doing all the things that he's been doing. This is why mm -hmm. he's going to continue to do it and be excited to roll into his next offseason. And I know Bronco Nation loves him because it's so fun. You tweet about any of his success. Yep. And, man, they're hammering the retweet button, hammering the like button. So he's clearly loved within the city of trees still, and we wish him the best of luck in Buffalo. Again, he's going to be busy this time in the next couple of years. We're not going <laughs> to be able to get into yeah. Super Bowl week. I, I know it. For I sure. know it. Okay, Cal, appreciate it. We're just getting Super Bowl week rolling. We got to... Uh, a lineup of guests that uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be entertaining. So remember to uh, tune back in later this week for Jay Sports Bar, serving the auto sports community. For Kay Calacanillo, I'm Jay Tuss. Thanks for watching, everybody.